Hey fellas, welcome to part four of the Spitfire build. Uh, I got some finishing touches to put on it, but it is almost done. In this exciting episode, we do some weathering. And I show you how I paint the exhaust stacks on this one, which is a little bit different than I did a couple times ago uh, when I showed you how I did it with the uh, Ammo MIG uh, acrylic rust effects. <clears throat> so it's kind of interesting. I think some of you guys will like it. And let's get on with the video. All right, so before we start the weathering process, I've got it clear coated with uh, Future. And for those of you that say you have to gloss coat before the decals, no, you don't. <laughs> and these actually, because my biggest fear was is that they wouldn't adhere very well, but these, these guys are stuck on there pretty good. They were pretty good decals. Uh, no silvering that I can see yet. I'll be able to see more if, uh, once I get flat coat on it. I did have to go back over with some Solvacet and in some places make tiny cuts in the decals, but uh, they all got on there really well, snug down really nicely, and they look really good. So I don't know if that's the decals or what. So I'll do a wash and I'll show you how I do that. I'm probably doing it a little bit differently than what I normally do because I really want this dirty. Oh, and I also went along and did some uh, chipping with a, hand, with a uh, paintbrush and some really light gray paint. Did some chipping around the cowl area and different spots along the wings. And uh, so I think that looks pretty good. Now for the base, the owner wanted the, uh, and you can see this is really dirty, but I got the base done the other day. Now the owner wanted the, the nose art on there. And I opted because uh, it did have Broomhilda. I wanted the nose art to be pretty big, the actual image. So, and because there's some uh, debate on whether or not it's Broom or Brunhilda, I just left that off and put the graphic on instead of the lettering. And there, I couldn't find any pictures of this thing other than that one picture of the guy standing in front of the plane and you can't really see how detailed the nose art is. I know some of the nose art back in World War II was really almost almost looked like a work of art and some was somewhat rudimentary now the so the only image i had was the decal so i took a picture of that put it in my computer and uh put it into my photoshop program and uh had to do a lot of work with it i spent hours in fact i actually tried to hand paint this twice once with acrylics and once with oil paint it didn't look right i wiped it off resprayed the the uh, the white color and uh, ended up making some masks to do uh, to do this. I did hand hand uh, paint the the uh, rocket, but I used a marker, and I've got these really cool markers from Michaels. And if you've ever used the uh, Sharpies, there's kind of a blue tint to it, like an iridescent tint. But I got these Graphic One markers from Hobby Lobby, and they're a little bit different. They come in a bunch of different points, or I got this set with a couple, bunch of different points, and they don't have that iridescent look. They're just straight black, and I, I'm not exactly sure. It uh, looks like it's archival ink. So that worked really well for doing the black, and uh, but the rest of it was masked off. I did hand brush the, uh, the hair, and uh, so I think that's about as good as I can get that. And then I went back and did all my weathering stuff on the base, so... I'm happy with that. But what I want to show you now is just a different method that I've used before on exhaust stacks. Now I showed you before using the uh, Ammo MIG rust effects. Well with this one, uh, I did this on the big B-17 that I built and it turned out really cool. So what I've done with the exhaust stacks is I primed them in black. <clears throat> I came back over them with a, with a gray color just lightly and nothing in here nothing that i'm going to do from now on is going to be uniform with these exhaust stacks <laughs> i don't want a uniform color so and next what i'm going to do or what i've done is i've mixed up some uh, tan that i had that i'd made up and a, just a tiny bit of red to make it look kind of pink i really diluted it with isopropyl alcohol and now i'm going to come back with this mixture and I'm just gonna just sporadically spray some of this to get some of that pink ooh, pink in there. I 
And then I'm gonna come back with some washes. So I'm just getting hints of this pinkish tan color on here. And again, this is really diluted. I've, I've diluted it with isopropyl alcohol so it dries fast. And I'm not really concerned about having a, having a nice finish on these because they are going to be rough. Okay, so that's, I think that's going to work. And again, you don't want to be uniform. Hopefully the lighting doesn't, uh, you can see this, the effect that that gives with the lighting that I got here. Okay. And uh, just to give you an idea of what this color looks like, it's kind of a pinkish tan color right there. It's not something you would think you would be putting on an exhaust stack. So that's, that's uh, the color that I mixed up. Okay, now because this is an acrylic, I can use an enamel on top of it. Now there's no clear coats or anything that I'm using. I'm just leaving it as is. I've got some Ammo MIG streaking rust effects. And I'm thinning this down with some uh, mineral spirits just regular hardware store mineral spirits don't use lacquer thinner i've had people ask me that in the past it's different lacquer thinner is different than mineral spirits and uh, that will just take the paint right off so i'm just going to take some mineral spirits and uh, wipe this kind of wipe it all over the place and i'm going to come back in and just hit this with a little bit of this rust effects and if you don't have uh, like a rusty type enamel you can use a rust colored oil paint or even like a mix of brown and red with your if you have testers enamels you can just mix that up and thin it down that works as well I'm just hitting this with this stuff do the same thing on this other one and it's a pretty quick process now when I did the ones with the uh, the turbo chargers or whatever they were on the b17 I mean there was a lot more to work with and a lot more crevices and nooks and crannies but it's the same concept and like always you can play around and find out what works best for you and see what you like Now when this dries, it's going to be somewhat splotchy, and that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for a uniform color. Now I'll let this dry, and then we'll uh, take a look at what it looks like once it's dry. Okay, I hit it with a hair dryer, so it is pretty dry. Well, we can take a look at that. You can see all the different, uh, all that, that uh, lighter shade of, of paint that we threw in there the grays the darker color of the rust color and it just gives it a real nice realistic effect one other thing that i've done in the past is i've used this metal slag pigment now i'm not a big user of pigments uh they, they do have their place but uh 
it, I, I do use it on things like this and when I like weather up a, a tank or, or one of my MAK kits, <clears throat> they, do, they do come in handy. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this pigment on my brush and I'm just gonna hit the, yeah, I got it kind of clogged up. Let me get a dryer brush. Well, no, I think this will be fine. I'll get a dryer one. And I'm just gonna take this metal slag. It's like a dark, brownish dark. And I'm just gonna hit the tips of these just to give it a little more, a dirtier kind of a dirtier look to it. Just darken these ends up a little bit. And again, this is easy to do. It's fun to do. I enjoy doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, anybody can do it. But it's one of those things that uh, if you've never actually seen it done before, you, it's, it's not something that you would think is, is how it's done. But I really like the look of it. And that is it. There are my exhaust stacks. And that was a total of maybe 15 minutes of work. And I think I've got a really realistic looking set of exhaust. And I'll flash up some pictures, some close-ups, so you can really get in and, and see what it looks like. Okay, how I'm gonna do the panel line wash, and if you've watched some of my other videos, I, I don't always do it the same way. Just, uh, I kinda do, do it by feel. But I really want this one dirtied up. So what I've got is some 502 Abtalung Sepia, and it's one of my favorite oil paints. It's like a dark brownish black that uh, leaves like a yellowish tint whenever it's, whenever it's really thinned out. And I've just got some mineral spirits here. Got my oil paint over here and I'm just mixing up a wash. And I'm gonna smear it over the whole thing. And I think this is what they call a sludge wash. And it's kind of messy, but it's a real quick method. So this is how I'm doing this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Been having a cough lately. So I'm just smearing it over the whole thing, and yeah, it's going to look messy. But we'll wipe away 95% of this. It'll leave some in the, uh, in the rivet holes. It'll leave some in the panel lines. And uh, some in the crevices. And I can take away a little more here and leave a little bit more there. It's just kind of a neat way to do it sometimes. <clears throat> Now what I'll do is I will let this dry and then I'll come back and I'll wipe it away with a dry paper towel. And then if I need to, I can uh, put a little bit of mineral spirits on my paper towel and then wipe a little bit more away. There's just so much you can do with it. And I can even come in here with a brush with mineral spirits and get all of it off if I'm not happy with it. So we'll see how this turns out. Now again, this is over an acrylic. You don't want to do this if you're using enamel paint and you don't have it protected with an acrylic layer. So that's how that looks. I might even add some more, even put some more oil paint in here. Now again, when I, when I first got into this, the panel lines weren't real deep. And I did take a scriber and rescribe some of them. So we'll see how that turns out. But uh if nothing else, it's going to give it some uh, somewhat of a, a dirty 
dirty used and, and uh, war weary appearance to it. So I will continue doing this over the whole plane and uh, we'll uh, see what it looks like before I wipe it off and what else we need to do to it. So it looks like kind of a mess, but it's uh, been drying for about maybe 30 minutes. So now we're gonna start just wiping away the excess. And I'm wiping it away in the direction of the airflow. And this is also gonna add streaks. Now, if it does get a little too hard to take off, I can always come back with just a little bit of mineral spirits and it'll take care of it. Now, in some of these crevices, I take a, a Q-tip or since we're doing a British plane, a uh, cotton bud. But I can come in here and take some off in some of the crevices. I can also come in here and take a little bit more off in certain areas with a Q-tip and just leave the surrounding area. Like that. So I can come in here in between all these little rivet, rivet lines that I made and take some off and that's going to give just a little extra shading and griminess around where the rivets are. So I can kind of play with it. I like using the term play with it. I don't know why. I guess because I don't have anything else to say. My, voc <laughs> My vocabulary is somewhat limited because I'm not the smartest guy on the planet Earth. And basically, I'm just wiping away and working with it, seeing what I like. And it does add just a little bit of grime to it that I'm looking for. <clears throat> okay, I've got a flat coat on it. And what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to go too much in depth in... in uh, throwing a bunch of oil paint at this, but I am gonna do a few things. <clears throat> and one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dirty up this area right along where they would uh, get into the plane. So I have my Tamiya flat coat, and I've got some earth-colored Abtalung oil paint, and I also have some faded white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brush, one of my weathering brushes, and I'm just going to come along here with a little bit and just add a little bit of this earth color right along here to dirty it up just a tad. It's almost like a dry brush. And I'm just punching it in there and it's not something that's going to be real noticeable but it is going to be there. And then I may come along with some other colors once I set this aside. But I'm just punching this in here a bit. And it doesn't show up like in your face, but it's just a subtle little color. Just right along there. Maybe a little bit over here.
Now I'm also gonna add a little bit of dirt to the wheels. And I'm gonna do this with the same color. But I'm also gonna come in with some faded white. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of faded white. Now this really has a tendency to show up if you get too much. So we're just going to put a little bit around the wheel here. And I don't know how easy this is to see because it kind of reflects. Got a little too much on there, but that's okay. I'm just gonna come in here and blend it. Just adding a little more white. Just gives it a little extra, extra depth. Okay, for the last part of the video, I'm gonna add some splatter effects and I'm gonna do that behind the wheels. So I've got some Ammo MIG Blue Dirt panel line wash and I've also got some of this dust. And I'm just going to make some splatter marks here behind where the wheels would make contact and I don't know if this is going to show up maybe along back here whoa and it's okay if you make a mistake and get it places where it's not supposed to be because you can wipe off what you don't want Maybe some splatter down here where the uh, rear tire would hit. Okay, and I'm going to take some of this panel line dust and see what this looks like. Ooh, it's really yellow. And that's all there is to it. I want to be kind of careful with this because it is so bright. But it, it should dull down to a lighter color. But this is going to grime up this area behind the wheel. Give it a little bit more of a realistic effect. I'm going to have to check my reference pictures to see what kind of streaking there is on the bottom. And then if I got some where I don't want it, I can just take a cotton swab and wipe it off. But I think that is going to do. And again, it's one of those subtle little things, but uh, I think it does make a difference. Um, I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll come back and look at it. And let's see. And then uh, I'll take a look at it. Uh, this should be it for this video. I uh, appreciate you watching. And I will see you on the next video, which will be the uh, final result of what we've got here. Thanks for watching, guys.